This is John Powell, author of My Journey, My Truth, and you are listening to Me, Myself, and I Radio. Good morning, good afternoon, hip hip hooray. This is Me, Myself, and I Radio, a self-discovery podcast. It's all about being extraordinary under extraordinary circumstances. I'm your host, Anthony Hayes. Welcome to the journey called life. Let's go. Sometimes in life, things can come across as rather odd or often peculiar, a little like the way that you decide to tune into other radio stations other than ours. Good morning, good afternoon, hip hip hooray, me, myself, and I radio tribe. It's Anthony Hayes, back again, me, myself, and I radio style. We're mixing it up with an awesome guest today. Uh, this is this is going to be a great episode, and um, let's just get right into it. As a life coach, author, speaker, and trainer, my guest has a deep understanding and appreciation for what it means to suffer in silence. My Journey, My Truth, A Story of Hope, Courage, and Transformation is available now. John Powell, let's get into Me, Myself, and I, shall we? Uh, hi. Hello. Thanks for coming on, man. I'm I'm so stoked to talk to you. Um, I love the book. I know everybody else is going to as well. I'll make sure that, you know, there's going to be links in the blog post and in the show notes for anybody who wants to pick up a copy of this great, great journey that you're going to talk to us about today. And um, just thanks so much for being here, taking the time, and thanks for writing your book. It was It was a fantastic read and a lot of people are really going to enjoy it well thank you for that you know uh when you're going through the process of writing a book you, uh, some of the things that you sit and wonder is man is anybody even really going to like this or anybody going to read it you know and yeah having somebody say that you know it, it, it kind of makes you feel a little bit better about the whole writing process <laughs> oh definitely we're our own worst uh enemies and critics so oh absolutely yeah, definitely um you know the the whole premise of this show, as, as everybody knows, we, we like to tell stories. We like to tell stories. We like to learn from other people. And in the whole me, myself, and I process, it's a, a bit of the past, present, and future of our, of our personal selves, of our personal journey, and our journey in self-discovery. So if we started at present day here with John, he's an author today. And this writing process for him, I know, because I've, I've seen a bit of it um, and inter- interacted with him a little bit before this interview as as he was launching this this project and this awesome book and john the author it has a feel oh man it's it's euphoric that's the only feeling that i get that's better than this is when i'm actually spending time with someone and coaching them and helping them make progression um for me that's just it's it's my wheelhouse man it's just it's where my passion is and that's the only moment that i regularly experience it's actually greater than publishing this book and publishing wow. this book is huge for me because this is like a, a this is my earliest childhood dream becoming reality yeah 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 i read that in the book that you always wanted to become a writer just the i element the uh, your your future um of what you're bringing into fruition today is just fantastic and you know everybody's gonna love today's story and to, to really hear how this whole project came into being and the book and everything like that so I mean, take us through, you know, the the past few years. Like, what did, what did it get? To, what did it take to get here? Um, there's there's so much heavy topics in this book, and I'm really thankful for you being able to share that journey with everybody here today. Because, you know, we all go through difficult times in our lives, and seldom do we talk about it. And you, I I'm sure know firsthand how how terrible it is to hold those emotions and those feelings in inside, and to be able to to bring this topic to light um has been 
I would assume, at least it was for me, a, um, a big weight lifted off your shoulders. Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, it's, it's liberating to a point that even I, as a, as a writer, uh, you know, I don't even have words to describe how liberating the experience is. Um, but, uh, what I would classify how I live the majority of my life from a young child, um, I lived in what I call quiet desperation. Um, I, w I was desperate for things to be better, for a better life, better quality of living, um, and, you know, I, I was quiet about it. I was silent. I, I just, I, I, I didn't know how to articulate that this is what I needed, right? And for many, many years, uh, you know, I, in the book, I put in the book that um, I, I suffered through various different um, childhood abuses. Um, I mean, I, I, I've, I've been molested. I've had, um, I've even had uh, cigarettes put out on my skin as a child and beaten and stabbed. I mean, I, I physically have the scars to prove it. Um, and you know, all these things, they went on for years and years and, and, and statistically speaking, when you look at someone that's been through very similar aspects in life, um, they they have a much greater chance of being, you know, addicted to substances, um, uh, sure, sure. abusive to their, uh, to their romantic partners, um, not staying with jobs, uh, just all a, a whole myriad of different things. And for a long time, for many years, I was falling into that category for the most part, though I can also say I was never abusive to anyone because I understood that pain and I refused to bring that pain to anyone else. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I, you know, I fell into addictions. I fell into homelessness for years. Um, yeah. yeah and it, I remember it, reading that part. That's like, yeah, rock bottom, huh? Oh, man. Uh, and, and see, here's the thing. When you hit rock bottom, and you know there's an old saying, there's only one direction to go, and that's up. But you know what? Yeah. Uh, I was going out and finding shovels. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? Right. I was finding shovels yeah. rather than wings. Um, and that just seemed to be the pattern. But, um, you know, nothing really changed for me until about uh, – it was about mid-2009 when um, I decided that I needed help, right? If I wanted to get a better quality of life, I needed to get some external help because obviously what I was doing wasn't working, right? Yeah. Um, so I started to get some help, and it did help me. I, I was going to um, psychologists. I was going to uh, group sessions and, and all different manner of things, and it did help for a time. But the trouble I found was that that was more of like a Band-Aid rather than the stitches that I needed to heal those scars up and those those deep, deep cuts. It was just a Band-Aid. That's all it was. Okay. That's understandable. Um, so, I mean, it did help, but it wasn't the fix, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't exactly what you were looking for. It was just a kind of a stepping stone to, to become who you are today. Exactly. Uh, it, it, what it did specifically, it gave me the vision of where I wanted to be, but it didn't give me the tools necessary to get there. Hmm. Um, and, and I found that to, to be very true for a lot of people, especially people in my coaching practice, people that I've coached is that, um, they talk about that they've went to psychology, uh, appointments and stuff. And the trouble that they found and the same trouble I found is that when you go and you talk to these professional doctors, they tend to focus on, the past on what is wrong on giving a label to something so that you can use that as a, as a crutch or an excuse to say, this is what is dysfunctional about me. Right. And then you, you take the pills to manage the symptoms, blah, 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 blah. This, this don't domino effect continues. And that wasn't working for me. I needed to get solutions rather than just put a, a, a name tag on it and say that this is just what it is. So in 2009, um, a doctor, and I really think that this doctor saved my life, whether they knew it or not. Um, but the doctor told me that I would never again live a normal day without the use of powerful medications to manage the symptoms. Right. Same, same message I was told. <laughs> yes. And I told her, I stood up and I said, it's only impossible because you have never seen anyone do it. But sit back, you're about to see it. Wow. 
and he and walked out. Just, I mean, it, it, and the only reason why I had that 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 conviction about it was that I needed it, right? That, like, it, it wasn't that I wanted it; I needed that to be true, and I just held on to it, no matter what anyone said. I just held on to it. As a matter of fact, that's basically the theme of what I made chapter one, that it's possible that if anyone else has ever achieved something, if anyone else has ever written that book, opened that business, uh, healed from whatever injury, then it's possible that I can do it, that you can do it, right? That Sure, yeah. And if no I one think... else has done it, then just do it, and then you can prove that anyone else can do it. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, telling your story and then putting this whole I would say almost like self-development direction on it is it's funny. We have, we have so many similarities. I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm reading your book and then I would go back and I would skim something from the page before. And I'm like, I'm reading this and I'm like, is this what my second book is going to be like? Because um, there was so many parallels, um, you know, with the, with the medication, with the depression, you know, the hopelessness that, that we felt at one point. And, I can see it from both sides of, um, you know, managing it. I I tried to do it without medication. I tried to do it on my own. I I did, you know, I did self medicate and I would drink, uh, it, you know, in times over the years and just look for that, like you said, that band aid, something to to kind of numb myself or whatever. And none of that seemed to work. And therapy for me and medication. It was just, it was something I didn't want, but it's helped. And I just, I don't really, you know, I, I think I used that in combination with other forms of, you know, personal therapy and, and personal discovery and stuff like that. To That for me has been my arsenal, um, but you went a completely different route. I know one other guy who is, is you know, well, he cured, he actually cured himself of, of bipolar um, nice. which he was diagnosed with and wrote about it. And just to hear this, these stories from you guys, I'm just, I'm just baffled and, um, and proud and excited. And it's just, um, it's just a miracle. I, I don't really know how, what other, how, how to put it any other way than that. And I think everybody, if you, you know, you pick up a copy of this book, My Journey, My Truth by John, you're really going to know exactly what I'm talking about because he takes, self-discovery to a different level in this book and self-development he he's living it every day well and and here's the thing and i actually have an entire chapter devoted to exactly step for step how i did it and and you also got to understand i didn't just quit medications cold turkey you know i didn't just quit the psychologist appointments cold turkey um, I, really, it was more of like a weaning down process. What I did was, um, and I, again, this is in chapter four. Um, what I did was I went and I addressed each of the core things that underlined all of my beliefs and, and, and my behavior patterns and my desires, everything. Um, I addressed each thing like a to-do list. And if it was negative, I I would wor I'd spend weeks or months working on that one thing only, and I would yeah. find ways to improve that one thing until that was no longer uh, what do they call it now a trigger, right? Yes. Um, until so that one thing was not down. a trigger. You wrote these steps down, and you kind of um, made like a a to do list or a pros yeah. and cons, and to really visualize it. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, Awesome. And in a way to do the list and how to do it. And I, I finished that chapter with how and why it actually works, right? So that it's just not pseudoscience. It's backed up with real psychology um, uh, things. I, I spent months doing research into why this works, right? Before I even started the book. Um, but uh, like it's backed by psychology studies and everything. Um, the thing is, is that if you can imagine, um, it's kind of like a like a like a math problem, right? Um, if you want to get the answer at the end of it, you have to do the 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 steps at the beginning, right? So one uh, plus yeah. one has to equal two, right? If you're doing it correctly, right? There's steps. Um, 
now, and I was so terrible at math. Well, Everybody it's, knows that. it's probably a bad example. <laughs> I'm just going off the top of my head here. I was a geometry guy. I could put shapes together pretty good, but oh, the, uh, mine the was algebra science. stuff I, just never worked for me. <laughs> I, I could never do math. Mine was always the sciences. Um, that that right. and uh, uh, reading and, and acting and stuff. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it all has to do with steps. So if you take away one step, then that affects the outcome, correct? Absolutely. Okay, so that's all I was doing was go, I would make a list of the steps of the, the triggers or whatever you want to call them, whatever um, name you want to assign to it. Uh, I was making a list of these things, and I would one at a time, and this is important, one at a, doing it one at a time, because it's if you get overwhelmed with this, you'll it, it'll just mess you up completely. Um, so I did it one at a time, and I was taking away each thing that could be called a trigger or a step or whatever you want to call it that led to those diagnoses, those um, um, the symptoms basically of anxiety, uh, PTSD, depression. Um, I even had panic attacks. I had probably 20 panic attacks a day, man. Like I didn't yeah. have a life. Yeah, those are those are terrible when they they come on. I used to get them. Yes. Like, uh not that many times a day, but I would definitely get them a lot. Right. Um, and so all yeah. I did was, if you can imagine, um, I mean, you said you've had anxiety attacks. Okay. So if you can imagine focusing on the one, on just one trigger at a time that triggers your anxiety attacks, right? You focus on that. You go to the root cause of it. You figure out why is that a trigger? What, what happened? What in my past caused that event, that belief, right? And then you change it. You you make it more positive and more uplifting and, and empowering. And suddenly that thing is no longer a trigger. And the continued process of doing that one after another after another, eventually you're going to run out of things on the list. And when you run out yeah. of the things on the list, then you no longer have that negative end result. I love that. You know, and that. that's all it's, I did. So it's so it's so, it so it sounds so simple, and to you know to put it into terms like that, and then at the at the end of the chapter, you have like pages for notes. Yeah. For the for the reader, which is awesome because they Absolutely. can make their own list and they can you know make their own checklist and find out what their own symptoms or triggers are and you know whatever you're going through in life whatever the difficulty the obstacle the circumstance there's a way to power through it and john's living proof of that yes absolutely um you know so they, listeners i mean if you if you take anything out of this it's just just know that whatever you're dealing with that you're not alone and there's a way out there's always an escape you know i'm a everybody knows that I, i've been taking martial arts like basically my whole life and one of the uh um one of the principles is there's always an escape, you know, whether uh, whether you're in a um, a jiu-jitsu match on the floor or you're, you're standing up or something like that. There's always, always a way to get out of it. So if you could just visualize what you want that end result to be, you can bring that into light and you can definitely get there. But it's going to take time. Yes. And that's the thing. Um, you, you know, in the, the realm of personal development, self-help, things like that. It's really, really hazardous to make promises of results to people, right? Um, especially in the arena of life coaching, it's really hazardous for anybody to um, to make a, a promise of results at the end of the coaching, right? But with this book, anyone who is willing to put in the work and the dedication it takes to get to the end will get to the end with the positive results that they've wanted and more. That's a promise. But it has to it takes that dedication and that hard work to get there. Yeah, it all it all starts with you. You know, you have to in order to get better, you have to want to better yourself. I think that's something that a lot of us realize, you know, we, we get stuck in these ruts, these bad habits, these self-destructive behaviors, what have you, and it just it becomes the norm and the the key is to to break those habits, to have a, a habit disruption, if you will, if you will, and to really take things into a new direction. But you have to want to. You have to want to get better. You have to want to break that habit, break that addiction, break that cycle. When you're ready, 
you will. Yes, and um, there's actually a really cool thing that I wrote um, as like a free gift on my website, uh, Um On the email opt-in thing, um, anybody that signs up for it, they get the the automatic response email, and it has a download link for something that I wrote. It's a PDF. And on that PDF, you know, I, I share on there that it, it, it basically it's 10 – tips for achieving your your success and rediscovering your passion so it's 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 10 things that i have like i personally sat down and i wrote and i i I took all my my knowledge and expertise and experience and poured it into this for getting this this specific thing um so there's actually some really cool benefit to it if anybody's interested in that and that can help you get started um part of the tips in there will help people get that drive to say okay this is it this is my time this is the moment that i'm moving forward and i'm going to change my life because no other option exists for me wow that's that's intense that's so awesome you know i mean we, we're just blasting through john's me myself and i elements today you know we're going backwards in time listening to his story how it unfolded what his future looks like he's already dropped resources on you guys so i don't even have to ask him that question websites we're gonna have links to all this and more in the show notes so guys just soak this in man just soak it in because you're getting inspired today you know you're watching somebody transform and the same aspect you can do it yourself you can watch yourself transform along with john along with us here on me myself and i radio because this is what we do this is what we do here awesome yeah uh you know um just last night, I was talking with someone, um, and they were – basically, it was a cry for help on Facebook. They did a post, and they were asking for help and describing a situation that they were going through. I don't really want to get into too many details, um, but um, something that I told them – you know, they were – basically, it was being uh, – like an issue of being bullied, right? Um, you know, go kill yourself, do this and that, people telling them that they're worthless, basically. And one of the things that I reminded them and I was talking to them about was that other people's opinions of you does not have to determine your reality. You have the power to decide who you are and what you're going to do with your life. You know, it doesn't have to involve anyone else. And if other people don't understand that you're trying to make a transformation, that's okay because it's not for them to understand. That's for you. Absolutely. That's their problem, not yours. Exactly. You know, and you can't, it, it's just like if you're in an airplane accident or like a crash that's happening, you're not, they tell you, put your own mask on before you go and help someone else, right? Because yes. you are not going to be as beneficial and powerful to someone else until you get your own ducks in a row. Yes. That's such a great metaphor. I don't know where I, it was something I was either listening to recently or reading, and they use that same exact metaphor, and it's just so cut and dry and such a great example of you know, the potential inside all of us. And I think uh, everybody learned that here today. And uh, you know, we, we always like at the end of the show to bring, the, to bring you know, your story together to kind of put a bow on things and really tie your me, myself, and I elements together and you know, if you could go back, John, if you could tell your 21-year-old self something, what do you think that would have been? Um, you know, the greatest lesson that I think that I learned, and I put it in the book, um, because it's brought me more peace and tranquility out of my chaotic past than anything else that has ever existed, um, is that I, I finally realized that if it wasn't for the times that I hated most, I would never be the person that I am now to have the things that I now love the most. And if I went back in time and I was talking to my younger self, I just, I would give myself that, you know, that, that little piece just to, to, as like a memento to keep in your pocket and hang on to and, and, and grab in your hand when you're having a hard time. Um, very cool. That's that's powerful, man. That's you know super how powerful. Uh, you know how at the end of most books, people do like a little special thanks, right? Um, at the end of my book, uh, the very last 
special thanks that I gave out in my book was a a very special thank you to everyone who's ever been negative, abusive, or manipulative to me. Um, yeah, that's, because that's so if it weird. wasn't I did for the their thing in mind, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because if it was not for their influence, I would not have been the person I am today to have even been able to write this book and be a positive impact in the life of others. Yeah, so suck it, haters. That's right. Thank <laughs> you. You've been a huge blessing to me. <laughs> right, I know, man. That's so fantastic, John. I can't thank you enough for sharing your story with our listeners and your book. And these resources you've shared today here on me, myself, and I, um, we, you know, we we're, we're, we got your back with this book launch, and we hope that everybody out there listening grabs a copy and really transforms yourself. Well, yeah, and brings because your your story, um, you know, full circle. Well, yeah, because the book is it's not an expensive buy. It's you know it's cheap. It's right there on Amazon. Uh, my journey, my truth, by John Allen Powell, right on Amazon. Give it a couple of minutes. Just go there, read the back cover on the book, and make a decision. You know, it, it's don't judge it before you read the cover. You know, um, absolutely. And, and just see, see if it works for you. If it does, give it a try. It's not even if it doesn't work for you. There's two good things out of that. One, it, you're not out very much, right? It's a cheap buy. And two, right. I guarantee you, I promise you, there's someone in your life that it will help them change their own life. And you can give it as a gift. Give them a gift of a reinvented life. What better gift could you go. give them? Yeah, and we're right around the holidays. So this would be a great gift to give somebody that's struggling in your life, you know, trying to to really discover themselves. They don't know what direction they want to go, maybe. So go ahead and pick up a copy of this book, guys. And, you know, get yourself some self-discovery. And, you know, we just want to thank our guest. I just want to thank my guest. I always say we. Like, I have a team of people. It's really just me in my closet. I think everybody knows that with my squeaky chair, but um, nevertheless. As long as you um, eventually come out of the closet, you're fine. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> we just, I just thank you so much, John, for coming on today, sharing your story with everybody and giving them thank some you. inspiration. And, uh, you know, in the time of the holidays, because especially this is a great time because there's some people that don't have family out there. They're going through struggles of self-doubt and emotions and just loneliness in the holidays and if this just gives you guys a little bit of inspiration for the holidays, that's all we ask. That's all we ask out there. And, you know, at the end of every show, we always like to encourage everybody to control the controllable. As for the rest, keep on flowing and just be. This has been me, myself, and I with my great guest and author, John Powell. John, thanks so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. Hey, Tribe. Thanks for checking out this episode. My book's finally here. The Science of Being is available now on Amazon. Please head on over to me, myself, and iradio.com or Amazon. Links will be provided in the show notes and blog. Pick up a copy today. Thanks so much. Tell me what to do.